tweeën. So, uh, Wim, what I find very interesting is uh, the way uh, if we roll together, the way uh, you have a term for it, right? Slow, uh, slow rolling. Slow rolling, yes. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it, may, it makes me think a lot of uh, basic fundamental training in martial arts, uh, traditional training, uh, like uh, isometric tra uh, training, stances. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's like frame by frame, uh, checking the posture. And uh, uh, what I'm curious about, how did you come up with this? And why, why do you do this? How did I come up with it? Yeah. <laughs> Tri trial and error. Right? Trial and error. So in the beginning when I started martial arts, mm -hmm. I was spastic like, like everybody else. So, and so you spastic. rolled hard? Yeah, like, like, yeah. like uh, you yeah, know, yeah. well, not, not, not full out, huh? but, but uh, in the beginning, just, uh, let's explain it with chess. Huh? Let's say we play chess, we just want to play, we just move, move, move. Mm -hmm. We don't really know what we're doing. If we move like, uh, imagine they have to fight me, right? And I'm throwing my legs around and kicking and, and being wild. It would mm -hmm. be a very hard training partner and randomly mm -hmm. I will hurt you. And in the randomness it's hard. Especially like if a new person comes into your gym and you roll with him, he's harder the first training and after three, three months he's easier. Because the first month, the first week is unpredictable and uses strength and everything without any dose. It just throws everything all out. And it's very hard to, uh, to adapt to that kind of a training partner. But after three months, he starts doing things. He, doesn't, he, he, he tries to like, emulate mm -hmm. what other people are doing, but he's not efficient in it yet. But he goes more predictable. So the thing is, Jiu-Jitsu plays between two extremes. Between extremes of full-out spastic aggressiveness and between full passiveness. Mm -hmm. Full passive would be, yeah, you take postures and you don't move and you be tight. So Don't can, move at all. Yeah, you yeah. could call it like a bunker, like a trench in a, you know what is a trench? Like, a, like in the war. Like in the eh? war, yes. You, you, the bullet fly, mm -hmm. so you're safe, he reloads, and you see your shot and you, you go for it. Now, if you see martial arts, if, let, let's say I get attacked in a park, and I'm laying, I just take my safe posture, and I will get beaten up, right? So in that context, it's not okay. Or if I'm on competition. That would be too passive, right? Yeah, but that's, that's not too passive, too passive for the context. Okay. Imagine we're doing a competition, mm. and in the competition, I'm, I'm winning the fight, I'm five points ahead, and no punches, and the person is trying to, like one minute left, and he's trying to get, find a hole to score. If I just manage to hold him off, in that context, passive rolling would be good. Just like doing enough, not too much. Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm behind, I have to work more, more, uh, more aggressive. The thing is, a person who goes all out aggressive and, and without feeling, see, might be doing correct things without knowing. And they will be doing wrong things also without knowing. It's random, mm -hmm. right? And a person who's rolling slow only has his postures to rely on. So he cannot mimic in really not using speed and not anything else. So I can also compare like swimming, see? So what Sorry. you're saying, you're, you're doing this to... Uh to improve your postures no, or I improve, transitions? I do it because I, because I think it's fun. That's okay. one. And, I be, That's sure. and because yeah. I'm getting older and, and it's the way to longevity, to rule forever, right? But also, at the same time, I believe it's the best way to learn. So well, the thing is this, as many angles I can take this. If you, if you look, and often, look, so many times people train by rolling and by drilling. The average way a jiu-jitsu class is taught is run around the mat, do your hip escapes, and if like 20,000 versions of hip escapes, nobody really knows or tells what is the correct hip escape, and you start doing three techniques. Mm -hmm. Three escapes from mount. Okay, hip, hip escape, well, there's like umpa and, and something else. Now, when, once you start uh, rolling, well, mount, if the elbow is in and I put my weight here, then you can push this leg away. If my weight is here, yes. So what is mount? 
this is mount, this is mount, high, low. Huh? So every way I put my weight will change a bit the mount. Every, I, like you call trench or every... No, ev no every, every, look, just like, look, look at me right now, look, now I'm relaxed. This, and did you see the difference what I did? Mm -hmm. You see, maybe I see on the camera as well, but just engagement, no engagement. Um, so these things all in, uh, influence uh, the technique. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but usually what people do, they teach one or three techniques, and I believe I have to drill, 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 drill. But what, what drilling is nothing more than doing one specific moment, and then your partner has to be able to react, reacting properly. You, usually what we're doing with drilling is just the equivalent of punching a bag. It might be good for speed, for stamina, all those things, but it, you lack precision. It's, it's the worst way of training, I think, because at the same time, you lose, um, how can I say, you lose a feeling of what's happening. It, it becomes a conversation. Look, it's like actually like having a conversation. Mm -hmm. And there is two, if we're having a conversation, see, mm -hmm. and I can speak bad English, eh? for uh, we play We now. are good at that, right? <laughs> yeah, we play now chess. Eh? Yes. You, you will understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But I will not go to a high level conversation with a, like, let's say, uh, with, a, with a board of, of whatever enterprise. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to convince people without proper structure and grammatics and, and all those mm -hmm. things. Now, there's two ways how I can convince you that I'm right. I can do it calmly with a small conversation, or I can start yelling at you and screaming, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and if I'm the, the, mm -hmm. the more hothead and you're the more timid, then I will win. The same is it, so I can start throwing all I have on you, and maybe I win, but I don't know why I won. I didn't use proper arguments, mm -hmm. see? So, yeah. so that's the thing. So when we are having a conversation, see? The best thing is if you start yelling at me, and I have good posture, mm -hmm. and you say, can you please calm down? So, rrr, 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 and I keep my calm. Can you please calm down? Eventually, you either will calm down, and you may or may not win, believe that I won or no, but outsiders will see, okay, this guy was calm and, and he's mm -hmm. more convincing like that. He, he can combine maybe like, uh, like, like Trump as a president, and uh, I'm not saying the other one is better, <laughs> I, I'm not going into that yeah. topic, but you uh, can see the, the, yeah, the, the yeah, difference, yeah. see, so, yeah. So the idea is more to rule for safety and to rule longevity and also compared to fitness. Is it so something that uh, you talked about people just starting out? Um, you, like you learn it right away to the new people uh, or is it something uh, that you also think they need some experience? You need some experience, for well, example, good question. In, in fighting to look, do that? I see it like this, look, Jiu-Jitsu is dangerous. It is dangerous. Mm. Not extremely dangerous some other martial arts, but it is dangerous because if I, for example, am on my head with a bent neck and someone punches me, I can injure my neck. If someone yanks mm. me when I'm not ready, if my neck is starting to yank, I'm ready. If I'm loose, you yank, it hurts. So in that sense, if I have a bad posture and I do random stuff, I'm going to injure myself. You might injure me. So mm. if you if you do that right away, okay, rolling is fun, but mm. it's dangerous mm. a bit, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it is because that's why so many people have like bad fingers and bad ears, but you see it like, oh, it's, it's, it's part of it. It should be like that. No, it should not. But if you, so the first day, if you go to the fitness, for example, that they should teach you perfect squat, perfect lunge, maybe gymnastics, perfect roll. So all individual body movements. But it's, for example, very hard to find out what is a proper squat if you don't have the feedback of a weight, right? So in Jiu-Jitsu also, you can say, okay, this is a perfect hip escape. You can do katas, let's say. But it's very hard to do katas correctly. Yeah, of course, like solo movement. training, solo movement. Yeah. Yes. It's very hard to do this if there is no mm. feedback from a partner. Mm -hmm. So what I do believe katas work is for people who actually fight. And then in their spare time, they try to emulate. Mm. I, I can imagine I'm fighting. I see. Yeah. For you, it's like a combination of... Yeah. Yeah, it's like katas with, with two, something like that. No, you do, yeah. You, can, you can do different things. Yeah. Huh? You can go yeah. harder, you can go slower. Of course. Yeah. But, but, but specifically this type of... Uh, this, this depends. Look, I usually say, I roll at, because when we roll today, this is like 30, 40, 50%, let's say. Okay? I can roll, usually my aim is 70%. And occasionally when I feel good, I do like 20 minutes mm -hmm. in one class, like 20 minutes of 90%, never, nine, nine, never 100. Mm -hmm. 90 means I'm going to use all my physique possible to win, but without going as far as injuring myself or my partner. One, going 100% means I'm going to try to win no matter what, no carrying injury for my partner, injury for myself. Is there a scenario where you do this? Yes. In your, imagine in the park, 
you get beaten up and someone is attacking your wife there, then you go 100% out and you have to, you have to do that. And no, nothing matters, not even the fact that they're breaking your arm. You get out and you go. 99% would mean I'm going to try not to injure myself and I'm not going to care about my opponent. And this might also be self-defense sometimes. 90% mm -hmm. means going all out, 1% physique, but without using, without doing injury anyone, okay? So 90% you should only go with people who are already moving well. See, okay. if I sweep you forward and you never rolled forward, you fall on your face, your face plant, you injure your neck. But if you had the movement, you've done it slowly, mm. then yes. Okay. So I believe this tempo should be how beginners should roll. Yeah. My, my free view is like, this. Like actually the, the, um, the inverse that happens right now. Oh yeah. yeah. The, what, what noting pisses me off more, I think, excuse me, huh? to like, like <laughs> drilling ba 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 on an unreacting partner. And yeah. even it mm -hmm. can be useful if the person um, like the, who you're drilling with has the perfect reaction. <clears throat> but then you should make sure, that sometimes you see a drill, one, two, three, four, five steps in a row, for example, pass the guard, knee on belly, spin over arm bar. And that happens just as much And if you do boxing, jab, cross, hook, middle kick, high kick. When will all, the, all those five hit? Yeah. Almost never. So you can, it can be jab, cross, hook, it can be pass, fight a bit, knee, belly, spin, arm bar, that scenario can happen, but never mm. or rarely in real yeah. time. Yeah, I like that you say that because we believe here also, like, um, also the progress, yeah. like uh, the quote of uh, GSP, progress comes from openness. It's mm -hmm. also a way, I think, if you roll like that, you're less in danger and more open, so uh, learn quicker. That's that's my opinion. If you roll mm -hmm. uh, like this, do you find that, that also with your students? Uh, if, if you, uh, exactly. Yeah. You have to be in general. You have to be open, mm -hmm. and this is in different ways. You have to be open to all kinds of people who come into your gym. Maybe not to all. Maybe, maybe there is like <laughs> if it's like really someone mm -hmm. aggressive who you feel is bad for the environment mm -hmm. in your gym. You can say we're going to educate the person, or we're going to kick him out. Yes. But it's a matter of energy, because. You, there's only one you and you have to dedicate your energy in the minimal eff effort, maximal efficiency way. So mm -hmm. it's not fair that one person would take all the energy. So in this case, I would say some people maybe not. But if you had a limited time and energy, then everybody would be always welcome, I would say. But and once you're in the in art itself, you should also be open. There is no dogmas. Mm -hmm. uh, like for years, it's been told, never show your back. But never show your back, that means, ah, so if I'm here, I always have to roll this way and I become very predictable. So sometimes I have to spin the other way, see? Always keep your elbows closed. Never this, never that. And by, by doing dogmas, well... We, we narrow. We narrow and yes, then yes. Yeah, everything works. Everything works or maybe not everything is a good idea to go into in a real fight. But still, as a completion of the art, everything, everything works, see? It might not be the easiest way, but... Don't that's forget, it. you that have to do the first move. Huh? Oh, that's true, yeah. <laughs> right. So, and I actually have to flip them around. So yes. here, up. let's go. <laughs> <laughs>